Hey guys, so just rolling off of that um, that third place here, we're going directly in this video uh, to Rocky Mountain Race Week 1.0. So it is Saturday. We just drove here last night after the awards, which were late because of lots of mishaps um so we um didn't get into indy until four o'clock which is where we already had our hotel booked so we're leaving here at like 9 30 and we have a 10 hour drive home um dad and i will get to the shop at about 10 o'clock and we have to go into changing tires on the 55 looking all that over changing trailer tires on this and then me and him have to load up and head to oklahoma city <sighs> round two is just starting all right, we have made it back home. We ran to the house and just dropped off clothes so mom can start washing those and getting them ready. And then we got to the shop, dad and I drove down and um, forgot that I left the Challenger on the trailer, bar backed on the door, so I had to run back and get my truck and whatever. So now we are getting ready to unload the 55. It's 10 o'clock, 10.30 at this point. If we could be out by one, we would be happy, but we'll see if that happens. Somebody ran out of gas. What? Somebody ran out of gas, so we have to rob gas from our race car, and we don't have jugs that are empty. So I think we're gonna try McDonald's cupping. And I am not responsible. We don't have a pump either. It's twisted and broke. We're messing around. We're gonna have a, a disaster. Here. Okay.
much recap because we guys we were running on like no sleep I was so tired by the end of the day I was like I don't want to make another pass but we did and I'm glad we did uh, 55 back here um, ready to go Jake and Lisa I don't know if they're ready to go or not but they are out here there's still a lot of people today is going to be nice because we have a checkpoint at Summit which is always a good stop check in with home dog here and so. I've never been to Summit. Oh yeah, you haven't been to Summit. I've done like everything else on the planet to do. I've done it all. I think we have I've never been to Summit. Summit and Bucky's as a checkpoint today. Yeah, pretty cool. That's like win-win. I'm going to get some Bucky nuggets. Pretty excited about that. So, recapping on yesterday because I didn't get any updates. Let's start at the beginning, work till the end. I'm Sweet. telling you again, that's a long time ago. I mean, I, <laughs> you're going to have to give me keynotes because I can't remember that. So we're going to start with, we left the house at like 8-ish, I think. Yesterday? Yeah. Um, so basically, we had, you guys saw that we quickly changed tires and got everything freshened and ready to go. The car, anyways, not us because we were not, not rested. Got the car ready to go. We rolled into tech at about... Something. Sometimes? Like About sometime 30. 11? I think 30. it was like sometime 30. 12 30? I don't know, but we rolled in. Uh, the Havlicks saved us a spot, so shout out to them. Oh, I'm starting to remember now. Yeah. You're getting close to them. Yeah. They had us a, a nice spot saved. Yeah, so we were able to pull in. They had us a nice spot saved. Um, they went ahead and left this morning, so we're not traveling with them today, but they have their 55 here, so we rolled in with them and uh, parked there, and then we got the car all set up and ready to go, and I ran in 50 different directions, and Dad did too, and we went through, we got to skip regular um, Rocky Mountain Race Week tech, which is checking your lights and horn and stuff like that, because they had a rule where if you had just come off a drag week, which we did, we didn't have to do that, so I just got to go straight to NHRA tech, and the line was not very long, so that was nice. Yeah, that helps. Um, good move, man. Good move, Matt. Nice. Um, and so then after that, we got ready for pass one, which was nice. Pass one was good. Yeah. You still got 760. 760. 760. Yeah. That was the fastest to date, so that was really good. But there was Ryan. I sent the change to Ryan. He wanted to make another change, and we did. And I believe on the second one, it launched good, but I lifted once we got a little ways out because the car was... I don't know if the track I was I think slick. we decided we lined you up a little crooked. It was, I think it was dark by then. Yeah, it was dark. And it was, for some reason, it was extra smoky. And Mike Henson was helping us. And he's up front. And I'm in the back. And we couldn't see each other. And, and I think it got a little bit sideways. We're not saying that's exactly what caused it. But I think it was a little bit of the, like, that probably And that was that it. side of the track has a bump, they say, that you may have felt. Yeah, so I, I don't know. So anyways, we went back for pass three later. And I did not necessarily want to make a third pass. I said, I'm tired. I don't want to. I don't want to make another pass. But at the same time, I was like, I'm going to kick myself in the butt if it comes down to the last day. And it was just that much that was... Yeah, but you made that pass, and when, I, when the car left, I'm like, God, it's going to tear the rubber off the track. It just, it was gripping and ripping, and you got down there and got a little nervous or something because of that bump, probably, what, pedal I twice, think, I think? Yeah, I think it was a very reasonable pedal, because... It was, it was a light pedal, but it was twice. Yeah, so. it was, um, like, it just, it didn't really feel like a big tire walk. It's, the car was pulling out of the groove, and I pulled it back in, and it went the other direction. And it was dark. And there was just, like, yeah, there was no reference point, but I still ran my fastest pass. Yeah, 758. Eight? Yeah. Oh, well, I just posted 759. So you're slower on my post than your post. Dang. That's pretty good for, That's good. for a chip. You got the wing on. Faster than you. <laughs> yeah, because I gave it up. So, 750s, we've broke that. But today, we are getting ready to head to Summit, like I said, and we are going to stop and get a new rear end gear because the car is a little noisy. The gear seems to be getting a little noisy I feel on it, diesel. I feel it in my foot at this point. Like, I've been feeling it all week, but on diesel, it's just very grindy. Yeah, it's not doing it on, on drive side of the gears. It's on the coast side. So, I did not have the shims to set that rear end up properly, and I hoped that it was good enough, but it's probably 
I'll, and it'd probably be fine. I've taken them out that sound like that, and they still look perfect. But we're so, if we have the time, we're going to, and uh, that's the plan. But it's pretty decent weather. We're going to try to avoid some Dallas traffic. So, I think we're going to hit the road and uh, try to make some passes. And I'm going to try to keep you guys updated a little bit better on this. It's kind of hard to get there and you get overwhelmed with getting what, unpacked what and everything. What actually happens is I think that I've done a video. And then I've done a video for five other people. So I forget yeah. to do my own. You forget who you push. <laughs> I forget that I didn't do my own video. So I am going to do a quick video for Pro Tour right now. Um, need to get them one. And then uh, I think we're going to hit the road. Later, dudes. On 77. Okay, checkpoint one, Ardmore Dragway complete. Um, we're getting ready to exit right over here and get back on 77 and keep moving. Checkpoint two out of three is Bucky's. And we are here and I am so glad because it is so hot. I'm pretty sure it's a million degrees. Um, if not, it's very close to it. And it's really just not very awesome. <laughs> So we have made it this whole way without any heating, overheating issues, and then we got literally just right down the road, and the poor thing was so hot, so hot. There's people with bags of ice over there on their car, like, it does so well. It does not run hot, but it is so hot that it can't help but run hot. Like, not a fan. 10 out of 10. Don't recommend. Yes, Places. This is Summit in Arlington, Texas. I like it here. I like all this stuff here. So the 55 has not been to Summit. I have multiple times, but 55 hasn't. We have a couple things we need to pick up for the 55. I think we're gonna pick up a rear gear um, to change just in case. I don't think we're gonna go ahead and change it yet, but we're gonna have it just in case we need to have it. And then I need to pick up a button for on the steering wheel because I wrap it up all the time and then break them. So I gotta find a solution to that, but right now I don't have the time, so I'm just gonna buy a button. Temporary. We were a little late getting to the track because it was flipping hot today, like ridiculous. Um, so we just kind of took our time. I don't know what dad did, but I think when he was dragging the car up, he smashed the trans cooler. So getting ready for our first pass and I looked back and I was like, oh, there's trans fluid on the ground, great. But, Motion Race Works had a trans cooler on site, so gonna get that switched out. Unfortunately, coincidentally, Doug did just hit the wall, but I believe he is okay, so we are going to be down for a little bit. So, not super rush, but. Just hold my hand for Okay, so today has had a flip and turn of events. 
and that's why Lise, it's important to remember endurance we have to make it we still could lose anything can happen but I was very <laughs> nervous on this pass because we got one pass and lately the car has been going left and that makes me nervous and so I was like I gotta make this count gotta make this pass count and I came back and I ran 765 all I wanted was an A to B but of course like the racer in me wants to go faster because I'm like I could have done better um, I am thankful for that pass. I had to keep reminding myself to calm the heck down and get to A to B. That's the goal. Um, so we had a good pass. And then we are currently number one in the class and number one overall. Ah! Part of that's because there's been some unfortunate events and I hate that. I said that at drag week, same thing, but um, my father is calling me. That is it for now. I must talk to him. Bye. So close to the hotel, yet so far away. A slight drizzle to start our day three. A little inconvenient, but at least it's not torrential downpour. Hopefully it brings in some cooler weathers at the cost of a little bit of rain. Most of the people at this hotel are already out, so we may be a little late, but I'm gonna pull it under the awning so we can strap the tires on without having to lay it in rain puddles. Checkpoint one, which is right down the road, but pretty neat. It is an old drive-in theater. Pretty cool. I like Race Week because they give us such different uh, checkpoints. checkpoints today so we're back at Bucky's this time in Melissa there is the hot rods I have like 55 over there I think we're gonna go in and get a snack um, and then clean the car up because it is disgusting that rain was nasty look at who showed up Jake the snake Have all took a beating. We just look like we drove in some nasty weather. Mini tree. Oh, what happened, dude? That hasn't been in here since race week last year. Oh, I didn't I've know. I've got that. a brand new one in here somewhere, but I don't have a little Lincoln. Oh. Rod or whatever. I did not know. So the trunk key is, uh, let me show you the trunk key. Let me find it. That's the trunk Oh, cool. Cool. Universal. Yeah. No. <laughs> Track, home, home. I gotcha. Checkpoint number four, Eisenhower, and then we are on the road for the rest of the way. So we got a blinker issue. I don't know what it is, but uh, they're not working and brake lights aren't working. So it turns out the, the flasher went bad, which, why would somebody have an extra one? I don't know, but Jake does, along with the whole rack of belts from O'Reilly's. Left, right, Jake to the rescue. Brakes. Cool, dude, cool. Almost there, final guest stop. I feel late, but it is what it is. And we got drinks, and then we got final, final fill up. I'm tired. These roads are wild. There's so many potholes, but we are almost there, and that's a good thing. Seven forty-one ninety. Did go seven fifty-four. 
Yesterday was so exciting and I haven't got to really share because I've been just so excited in the moment that I forget to video. So I'm gonna tell you guys all about it. The excitement's still real today. So I went to Tulsa. Tulsa is my home track, Tulsa Raceway Park. Um, I'm not necessarily close to it, but I am, that's our closest uh, quarter mile track. So anyways, I drove over and uh, Dad and I like had done the math and in order to take first place, there's a, a little do a Ford Durango. I think I talked about this, that was first place. But his class is capped at 750, so he can only turn in up to a 750. And so I had done the math, and assuming he did his absolute you know, best, a 750 every day, because he's very consistent, he's like got you know 751, so assuming he could do his best, I knew I needed to run at least a 745 every single day, um, you know, or else I'd have to go really fast one day, whatever, to offset it to take first place overall. <sighs> so, we get there, we set up. I always love going to Tulsa because we have so many friends that are like family that are over there. And so like, it's just like a parking lot party and Earl Groves brought barbecue and whatever. We were all having a good time. I go out and make an early pass and it was 754, like 187. And so that's cool, that's exciting. Like I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that, but I was also not that excited because it, it was not what I needed and I'm hard on myself. So I didn't want to, I, I wanted to do better. I've got so many people counting on me. I wanted to do better and so beat myself up. I was also frustrated because I thought that the rear end was hurt. There's just a couple things I thought. So I was like, I'm not gonna get another pass. But we decided to go for it. I was talking to Ryan. He's like, I'm sending, he put a little pepper emoji, a spicy tune. So I was like, okay. Um, we go back out after we eat, go to make my pass. 7.40, 7.40 with a seven at 190, almost 191 miles an hour. Talk about an improvement, that's just insane. So I was ecstatic, everybody was ecstatic, and that was my very first licensing pass checked off. So I've been hunting those sub 750 so I can get my license, and so I finally, on my way to being a fast girl, <laughs> so excited so um i just want that advanced license but anyways the transmission's got some weird pressure going on not really sure what the cause is our friend jim sams who helped us with the dodge challenger build he is this is his shop he's right down the road from where we were staying so we pulled in put the car on the lift and we're gonna drop the transmission pan and just check everything out and make sure nothing's hurt but i'm gonna go help dad um and go from there I went to grab food while dad was checking the pan and this is the heaviest burrito. Look at that. Holy smokes. Mr. Tacos, that's what it's called. That is a giant burrito. I would like to weigh that. Yeah, that's gotta I be heavy. It's gotta be heavy. And coincidentally, uh, nothing's wrong with transmission that you see. So why is the pressure, <laughs> Goofy? I don't know. That's, I want you to call Jake and describe it. What is this? I don't know, sauce. I guess I'll find out, huh? It's probably hot. You should probably taste it. I probably should wait and just eat it. Okay. Just so you guys know, it's not all fun and games. Um, <laughs> we thought the transmission was okay. There's, It's going to be okay. There's like a seal or something that's blown. So when I drop it in third gear, it um, drops 100 pounds of pressure. Brake doesn't really... Brake doesn't hold. Um, reverse doesn't, so those are all correlated together. So, um, Jake is here, and he is getting ready to help us bust into this. We're not gonna have to take the pan off. He's got something figured out, so we're gonna ready to take converter out, pull pump out. Luckily, there's this lift. It's like right by our checkpoint. The checkpoint is just around the corner that way. So this is our friend Jim Sams. Um, I didn't realize the shop was so close. Worked out perfect, so we're gonna bust that out, get that on a lift. I mean, it's already on the lift. We also had a water pump leave, which kind of is inconvenient, but we are glad that we know that that's what that was because there was a little bit of water um, disappearing and we couldn't figure out where it was going. The plugs looked good, the exhaust looked good. So trying to figure that out, but luckily uh, we had gaskets it's on the lift fixing that.
vibrated loose. 3,000 miles, we'll do that. But uh, we're gonna stop and get some JB Weld, fix that up. This is a cool checkpoint. This is, I think it's called Pops Soda. Um, all those bottles you see right there are different kinds of soda, and it's cool in there, like ones that you can buy that are cold. So it's pretty neat. And uh, we're making, like I said, making good time. And there's a diner. So I'm gonna see if Dad will want to eat here. He'll probably tell me no. Cause he's ready to get there, but we'll, we'll check it out. was the most unique pass I think I've ever experienced so um, as we got there and unloaded we were we were actually early even though we felt late we were early we got there there was no one there I had friends driving in um, to watch that pass to watch the last day because we knew that we were um, potentially going to win and so but they just want to come anyways but anyways i knew that was the pass that was the potentially winning pass and so normally i'm very very anxious not anxious in like a bad way but like let's get going like very high energy and i was so calm and i remember sitting in the staging lines and there was no one around because like it was we were early we just made a pass early and i sat there and i was like <laughs> it was just like silence um it was like the very it was the weirdest i don't know how to explain it, it was the weirdest feeling like i didn't record anything i wasn't on my phone like i was just sitting there and i'm like thinking like soaking it all in i'm like this could be the past this could be the past and this could be you know it has potential to be really good and it was just a very calming feeling and there was just silence and everything felt silent the outside world felt silent and the car felt silent and then lining up and it was just like after i made that pass like it was just like <sighs> like i knew that that was the pass and i knew it was good so it took a second to sink in it was pretty surreal so um that's where the lack of you know real time comes but stay tuned words are coming up she's ever made <laughs> in doing this kind of I thing. I don't think she made it. She just recovered. <laughs> <laughs> With a 750, Alex Taylor. <laughs> and y'all, she earned every bit of it. She was on 1.0s. Made some miles in the car. Made it to drag week with all sevens. Made it to race week with all sevens. Badass. Yeah. And Mika. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I met on Drag Week 2014. She came to Rocky Mountain Race Week 2015, and she won the Ch the Kids Choice Award. Yeah, and it was her birthday. That it was her birthday, way. and it was a hundred dollars. And she was super excited. She like she's like, this is the first money I've ever won drag racing. And ran her first eight that year. That's right. Right. Day after her birthday. Right. Screwed it up on her birthday, but figured it out. That <laughs> 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 she made it true we're all good. <laughs> the youngest com co uh, competitor in drag week ever. And our own Alex Taylor. Come on, Dennis. Come on, Dennis. And that's a wrap for um, race week 2.0, which is actually a wrap for the season. So we thought we would sit down and have a chat about how race week, well, drag week and race week went um, from our perspective and then how the car performed and then what next season kind of looks like. And you like. really expect me to remember, what's that, like a month ago? Yeah, this is definitely a very cold call right here. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even no tell rehearsing. them what we were discussing. <laughs> No rehearsing. I just got to try to, what did it call my remembrance? It's I got to go back word. and find it. In, in here. It's in the vault it's somewhere. It's memory. So recapping. So this is the either third or fourth video. I don't know at this point, but there was two drag week videos and then we saw a race week. Um, I kept telling everybody that I didn't record a lot because it was, it was hectic this year. It was busy. It's what happens when you go fast. It does. Man, it gets busy really quick. So going into drag week, we didn't really know exactly how the car would do. Mm. Um, we had a little bit of testing, but re recapping, right before drag week, we had our transmission issue after testing. Remember? Yep. We lost a drum. We did. It, we didn't lose it. It literally wore. Mm -hmm. What was it? When did we find that? That I was right, it was right after testing. Ryan found it in the data that there was a pressure drop oh, from yeah. the second to third gear shift. And he said, "I wouldn't necessarily pull it out. It could be something." <laughs> but it's like, no, we're jerking <laughs> we're pulling it, out. it out. We got two weeks, and we pulled it out. And then there was the ceiling rings. Yeah, are what over time ate into the drum. Because the drum's just aluminum, and mm -hmm. the new one is sleeved as steel. You know, yeah. it's obvious. But other people have had that issue. Keep in mind, this is a special drum. This was a pro mod drum, um, like pro mod size shaft drum. And so finding that part is hard, and then finding it in a two week time period. Well, one, or you, one week. Night, it was one week time yeah. period. Yeah, it was a one week time period. So that's how that week started. So, one, we didn't know if the car would stay together because two weeks of drag and drive very back to back is a lot of work. i really did not expect it to stay together no we left the shop the first day of drag week we're like we'll know in two weeks how this goes <laughs> have you talked about the cam issue uh yeah we we discussed that that okay. was in testing um that was when we had oh, yeah, a lifter that was before hurt. we tested yeah see how jumbled this was so it's been hectic around here um so anyways going into drag week was Unknown. We didn't know how the car would do. We didn't because we just had the one testing on Because you only made like it. two, yep, two full quarter passes. mile passes, and that's when you broke into the sevens. Yeah, and so we had that, and then it, there was just a lot of unknown. But drag week was successful. It knocked a number down every single 
day we got faster and faster and if you guys actually go back and watch those clips from the first day of drag week to the end of race week you can see the car like launch and leave and just react so much better each time so if you pay attention to that you'll notice that it was very conservative to start out well actually hold all of drag week was conservative drag week was very conservative um he was always every day he was like we gotta go faster turn it up what are we doing <laughs> this is a race like, car we're getting data so and, you know to her and ryan's credit they were they were inching into Meticulous. it and it's like I, i'm not i don't have paces for that you know i'm not getting any younger so i liaison between dad and ryan and i was like it's yeah. okay we got dad get... wants to crank it up and ryan's like tell him i said no <laughs> and that was it or i call him and be like dad has this idea no it's like this isn't a <laughs> rehearsal let's do this thing but it was it was a good rehearsal for race week and it worked out really well so the drag week you guys saw we took third place in unlimited which was very surprising to say the least that was very unexpected yeah it was a, due to an unfortunate accident which i just explained that happen, last time yeah you know but that's that's what happened that's you know third place unlimited drag week that's a big deal it's pretty cool it's pretty cool yeah. i've never placed at drag week so yeah, that's a podium finish yeah. second place would have been a guitar and you we also have a new shop cat i don't know if you guys hear that meowing but yep. it's a nuisance it's very loud so anyways drag week we've already you guys already saw those videos you've already seen race week at this point but going into race week we literally you guys probably saw in the time lapse but we literally drove straight from michigan, michigan. we stopped right outside of indianapolis we all napped for like, I don't know, two hours, I think. Maybe. And then we, because we already had a hotel booked because we didn't plan on going to awards because um, we knew we needed to get back. And so then we drove straight into the shop. At nine o'clock at night. Nine o'clock. It was so late. And um, you know how hard it is after a week of racing to back a trailer in here, unload that car, which is not, it's never easy. It's not easy. I hate crawling under the low car like that. Unload it. Put it on the lift, which in our shop, the lift is not easy to get on, but no. put it on the lift and then it's like, well, we're already here. Let's drain the fluid out of the transmission. Let's yeah. drop the pan. Jake wanted to turn the pressure up on the trans, so I literally mm -hmm. had to drop the pan, crank up the pressure, and then, you know, clean the belly pans, everything, yeah. put it back together. Yeah, it was a lot. At and, nine o'clock. And we had to change the tires, which is a... We didn't have to, but we wanted to. Well, I mean, we had a whole nother week. It was that was the, the reason we stopped, um, and then we changed the tires on the trailer too, the little mini trailer. So there was a lot, and then we're like, we're looking at each other like, this is stupid. This sucks. Like, you if know, we could the bad just... part about that mini trailer is we couldn't take it out of the truck. <laughs> That's true too, because it's in the truck bed, mm -hmm. and so we don't want to disconnect the trailer, pull forward. That's really a big job. It doesn't sound like it, but it is. Got to put the ramps on the truck. Just her and if I. If you guys saw the night that we loaded the tra that the first night before drag week, <laughs> you interrupted me. Oh, are you not done? No. Oh, go ahead. I, I am guess. now. Okay. What did you have to say? I was describing the pain of getting the trailer, changing the tires on the oh, mini trailer. Continue. We had to do that in the truck. So I had to unstrap it, which the, the mini trailer, the drag week trailer has like seven straps on it. Yeah. Are you bored? No, I'm waiting. Are you upset? Go ahead. Your butt hurts. I'm I just waiting. I'm waiting. So it has seven straps. So in or and you got to crawl under it. So I got to shimmy under, you know, in a space this tall mm -hmm. and disconnect straps in the dark and remind you know it's dark out there it was dark i didn't do it because i was uh, oh and wasn't it wet because it we raining. busted no, a bucket of hand soap oh yeah so everything in the trailer was covered with pink hand yeah. soap and i had to wash all that out mm -hmm. and then crawl into there in the water and yeah unstrap it and That's take true. the wheels which are front wheels off of the camaro so they're 15 by four mm -hmm. take those off change the tires and yeah. put them back on in the truck. And I was not doing that because I was going through. Hey, you were doing nothing. I was going through bead locks, uh -huh. <laughs> slowly but surely. I guess she was. She was putting the big back <laughs> tires on. But I'd trade that job anyway. Yeah, it's just it's very tedious to go around bead lock ring. Yeah, twenty four bolts or something. A million times. times. Yeah. So there was that. But what I was going to add to the whole trailer fiasco. Okay, the phone crashed. We thought we lost that. iPhone. But iPhone is the best is thing the best. since sliced bread. And most people will agree with that. You're going to have haters in the comments. I don't care. So, anyways, as I was saying, um, if you would have seen us, if you would have seen us loading 
the trailer into the truck the very first time, it was a So disaster. what we do, let's describe it. We have to back the truck up, mm -hmm. pick up to the wall. We, we have we a, got a little retaining foot wall tall out retaining there. Wall, and we put motorcycle ramps down. And then <clears> she and I push the trailer up the ramps. Of course, we push it up. It goes off the ramps, crash, and mm -hmm. it literally bottoms out on the axle. <laughs> we, we did that like three, <laughs> three times. times. Yeah. It's great. So anyways, that's how that goes. That's why we didn't take the trailer out of the truck. because yeah, it's a pain. It's a pain. So then we had to leave here. We got to go home. I had to repack. Dad doesn't have to do that because mom does it for him. Whatever. So Because I don't require 50,000 clothes. Whatever. I don't either. I took very few clothes. So... Anyways, we had to repack. And so by the time we actually got to bed and like got up the next morning, I think we had another two hours of sleep. This was a rough two weeks. But it was actually, I wasn't as tired by the end of it as I would expect. Yeah, so we got two hours coming in mm -hmm. and then we got two hours that night. Yep. And we get up and we fly to, oh. We fly, uh, no, some, I get to tell this. There was drama on the way. It wasn't there. my fault, okay? So I was getting ready to say that actually. So we drove to Oklahoma City. That's about four and a half hours from the shop. And I would never do this, but... Oh, get out of here. You almost did it <laughs> I, last week. I, I have a much longer range on my truck. But somebody didn't check the gas gauge. No, I checked He it. didn't. I knew. And so we were in the middle of where there's no gas stations. And there he's was like, a gas station. He's like, oh, the, the gas light came on. But I don't know when it came on. No, it's not right. <laughs> the gas light came on and the truck literally went how many miles? <laughs> it came on he said the sun was on it so anyways long story short i look up and i'm like oh the closest gas station's behind us it's like four miles back so we turn around on the on like no exit. you're it missing is true. things it is true we ran out of gas we had to turn around first we had yeah we turned, we turned around, around but we out. ran out as soon as we did yeah but and we had no gas yeah but that's, that's my point is we had to turn around first we turned around got on the uh, the going back direction i was like oh maybe we'll make it but we didn't we had to pull over and we didn't have gas and we also didn't have a spare empty jug and so you know what we were doing you guys saw it actually they saw this i put it in the video oh. um where somebody didn't have anything so i had to take a mcdonald's cup and we had to siphon gas out of the 55 and carry it and pour it in so yeah that's how that just, started. i mean it, it literally we did didn't we do that twice because you yeah. put several cups in and it drove like a quarter mile yeah yeah so that's how that went so that's how that we started so really when that week starts like that you can't expect it to go that well yeah it was a bad start it's a bad start but, but it was a great finish yeah we pulled up we unloaded everything went smooth that first day because at race week you guys know you tech and race in the same day so that was like as soon as we were up and going it was full sin from start to finish once on two hours of sleep yeah but that's a minor detail yeah we we run on adrenaline <laughs> until the end it really works we were good until the end <laughs> the very end so anyways kind of fast forwarding the week went smooth there again you guys will notice in these videos or these past videos you would have seen how the car like progresses every single day it really improved um so by the end of it well about midweek we started seeing sub 750s at tulsa so that's when i was upgrading my license um, I've had my license for eight years, so I was just upgrading, and that's when I got my first sub-750 pass. I think it was a 740. That, that it's also was a 740. Was that the first one? It's the first one. Okay. So then um, that went really great. That was a good, like, that's what kind of put us over the tipping point for taking us into first place. Um in our class but we weren't there yet but we knew it was possible at that point um thursday went good we didn't see a sub 750 because that's the track where that was it was the eighth mile, eighth mile. It, it they recorded as a sub 750 but i didn't run that because because it, it worked out to be a 748 mm -hmm. i think yeah what they do is they take the back half of the time slip from the day before which was a good one for us yep. because it was a 740 pass and they add it to your and that day sucked major that was an awful because it was the longest worst drive dirt so roads bad. brick roads driving around towns for hours on the end anyway we got there just in time to throw make everything out of the pass. trailer and make one hit on a track that we shut down at an eighth yeah and i'm not used to that that comes up quick so anyways that that's that was in gouda springs so that was that was and then where? gouda springs what spring gouda gouda yeah like the That's cheese. cheese. I know. 
Is that literally where it was at? I don't know. That's what I call it. It was something. It's Guida. I think it's Guida. I don't even know. I had never heard that before. It's in, it's in Kansas. So, anyway, so that, <laughs> that's where it was. And then the next day was the last day, and it was the weirdest day because it was so, like, we're like, okay, we just have to run a sub-750, and this is, like, our win. And that was we Oklahoma were, City? Yep, and we were there early. Like, we got there early. That that was not happening on race week because race week's backwards where you drive and then race so you it's hard to get there to the track early but we got there early and we got unloaded and there was almost no one there yet so it was like well do we make a pass like it kind of feels weird to make a potentially winning pass when there's no one there like at all so it's like it don't feel weird. weird to me it felt weird to me i was like we had friends coming and stuff so i was like i kind of feel like I should we did we made those passes before our friends got there yeah we made we I forgot and we only made one pass yeah, you made so, one pass. Yeah. It's like, I want one and done. Yeah, so it was like, okay, I guess we'll go ahead and make a pass. And, and we had friends drive four hours. Yeah, so I kind of felt bad, like, to make the pass early. But at the same time, I was like, I want to get this out of the way. So that way, if something happens, we have time to fix it or know what to do. Because that was, like, the winning pass. Mike was there. Mike Bell was the only one that was there. But Alan wasn't there. Omero wasn't there. Him and his wife, he was he was speeding to get there. Yeah, he's an ex-cop, so he's got a ticket <laughs> to speed. <laughs> so, anyways, so we made the pass, and it was like the car just, you'll, you saw the video, but the car just like squatted down and launched and made the pass. And I actually, I keep my phone in my car when I make the pass. Like, I keep it over, and it's got a little container spot. And so, like, when I got out and, like, packed my shoots, somebody actually messaged on Instagram and said, 738. And I was like, ah! That's how you found out? Yeah. Instagram? <laughs> I did. Jeez. <laughs> they were but on it. They the were The best quick. part of that was 193. I mean, yeah. you were flying. I'm almost part of the 200-mile-an-hour club. Almost. almost. Not quite. Not quite. So, that's the goal. So, anyways, people were like, why did you not make another pass? Because we want to finish the quest for the sixes in 2022. I and literally I, just saw a post on Facebook where a guy and his wife raced the car all day. Yeah. They broke the record. They they won. Everything was so bitching until the guy decided he wanted to see if it had a whatever it was in it. And he made the last pass, scattered the motor. Yeah. Blew rod out the side of it, hit a wall because saw of the oil. In the race week group. I mean, it's sad. So that's yeah. why you only made one. Yeah, pass. I was like, why, one, I want to finish it for next year. And two, I know the car will drive on the trailer right now. And there's a lot of sweetness knowing that you're driving the car on the trailer and off the trailer. Because we had SEMA and PRI and all that coming up too. And plus, the win is a lot less sweet if you're pushing your car on the trailer. <laughs> it's just contradictory. So uh, anyways, those two weeks went really good. And that was a good cop or what would you call that good top off to the season it kind of made like the rush of building the 55 worth it and we got like you said we did SEMA and we mm -hmm. got PRI coming up so the car drives in and out everything's really good with it it's great I mean the, the car seems like other than the fact that it was filthy it is not any worse for wear than it was when we now the rear end's noisy yeah but that's so annoying. we got gears while we were on drag week yep. right race, no race, race week. week yep so we got new gears we're going to throw in the rear end because i didn't have the proper pinion shims and i had to get this done in a hurry yeah so it, it's kind of worn the gears a little bit but you actually can't see where like when i looked in um on race week because it was it seemed very loud but when i looked in the fill cap area like i could actually see the front and back of the gears and i didn't actually see anywhere so it's not like that you can shave with them but it's just noisy yeah. on coast yeah so it yeah we'll fix it we knew that sure. it was good on the drive side of the gear mm -hmm. that's why she made passes yeah. all week with them so anyways that kind of finished off the season that's um it's been a long it's been a long but short year at the same time so um there's lots of stuff coming up some stuff we can talk about right now some stuff i think we'll keep that but just know there's more stuff like what stuff we have a project. Oh, a new project? A new project. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It is a cool project. We brainstormed on the way back from the I don't know what stuff she's talking about. That's the stuff I'm talking about. What else? There's other stuff, too. Um, There's something else I was thinking that is kind of cool. I don't know. I can't remember, but... Anyway. Oh, well, we got lots of stuff. There's stuff. So don't don't worry. The 55 is not the end of an era. It's kind of the beginning of a new one. So... Um, it's not an era. You see what I did there? <laughs> end of an error. 
<laughs> that so, was an error. <laughs> no, that was very intentional. Okay. <laughs> So, anyways, I'm saying it's not the end of the building stuff, the build series and things like that. YouTube is not dead at this point. It's just we are in um, off season and prep for next season. And this is like the most busy time of the year as far as like emails and office work and bleh, all that stuff goes. And catching up from six <clears throat> months of no work. Yeah. So that's why it's been a little, a little desolate around here. But it's not actually been desolate at the shop. As far as the 55 for next year, though, we have been, we spent the day, part of this morning, I should say, ordering parts to freshen Dad's motor that will eventually go back in the Nova, but which is sitting over here, which is why I'm pointing this direction. But um, the goal is to build a new identical motor after it's upgraded. Um, for the 55 so he can have his back. But we have sick week coming up in February. You notice she's giving me the used one back. It's gonna be fresh. It'll be fresh. Freshly used. We're You're getting all new parts. Completely used by the time we give it back. No, February. We have to freshen it again. It just needs one, it's just gonna have one sick week on it. It's not a big deal. So uh, it's fresher than when you gave it to me parts. I'm the one that got some of the parts. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so, um, February is sick week coming up soon. Very excited about that. That's actually going to be fun. So we're going to get the motor freshened up for that. We won't have the new motor in time for that. The new but. This motor will be more compression and mm -hmm. more camshaft, which is what it's lacking big time. It is lacking I that. mean, big it's time. amazing that it runs as good as it does. Yeah, when Dad got, when like when we got back, Dad did the math on the compression because we thought it was like a little over eight to one. It was like seven. Because nine. I had changed from fifty thousand head mm -hmm. gasket to sixty thousand, and it lowered yeah. it. So we we're so very low, very low compression. So that's going to be fixed for next year. We're doing camshaft. Talking to Iski today on that. So, anyways, plans for the fifty-five. Hopefully, we'll see sixes and two hundred miles an hour. Maybe it's sick week. If it doesn't, it's your fault. It's, it's not my fault because it's already capable of that, and we're putting more in it. And we're changing some transmission gearing. So everything's gonna be what? It's my fault. It's not mine. <laughs> Nobody fault but yours. Okay. I'm not the uh, loose nut behind the steering wheel. Okay. So um anyways. Oh, my foot slipped off the pedal. It does. My foot actually does the floor is so slick that my foot really does slide. We're gonna add some grip tape for that. Maybe some blocks on a phone booth behind you. That is also seat. true. We that put the true. seat a little too far back for three foot six people. I'm five four. Three six. Thank you. Anyway. Five four metric. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, okay. I am calling this. We are done for this video, but there's more stuff coming. So uh, that just wraps up the race season. So thanks for listening to us ramble and watching us uh, make passes. Peace. Okay, close it officially, I guess. Peace. Be happy, go fast, stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.